What's good people, I'm Ed Reese and welcome back to the second take top 10 look of the week for those that don't know we look back at the or my favorite top 10 stories that have happened in movies tv whatever over the last seven days so what shall we get into today mm -hmm -hmm. All right. so number 10 start simple richard e grant has joined the cast of game of thrones for the next season season six i believe solid actor could be good he could be bad like he's that, he's that solid that he plays an excellent villain excellent villain but he can also be the wise older guy dispensing advice so i don't know who he's playing i don't want to know the information may be out there but i'm a game of thrones fan so i'm, I'm stepping back i don't want to know too much i want to be surprised so i love me some game of thrones as much as i hate it i love it oh i love it and i hate it but I love it. Uh, you know what I mean. Yo, you know what I mean. You guys probably watch it. You, oh, fuck, yeah. But yeah, Richard E. Grant. That's solid. It's nice to know there's a good new Matt character joining that cast. I look forward to this, baby. Ain't that far away? A couple. Well, yeah, we thought about four months or something. Four or five months. But yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. But they start shooting soon. So ah. Number nine. Ron Perlman's been dropping some pearls of the possible hell free hellboy free story that he is desperate to get out there he's saying that he's desperate for these movies to be completed as a trilogy and that the twins basically if those for those of you if you remember in hellboy 2 hellboy's wifey was pregnant with twins and it turns out that these twins are going to be one's going to be heavenly and one's going to be demonic One's gonna look like Hellboy and one's gonna look like the mother. But in the typical Del Toro twist, it's gonna be the one that looks like Hellboy is gonna be the heavenly one, the one that's angelic. And the one that looks like the mother is gonna be the demonic one. And these kids are basically gonna bring forth the apocalypse. I wanna see this. Like I've enjoyed the Hellboy films. They're not they're, they're being fun, you know. They may not have changed the world when they dropped, they weren't box office know smashes but they were enjoyable films you know probably del toro's better english language movies you know because he, he, he's best at his horror so hellboy is kind of a good film because it blends the best of both worlds it's got the demonic horror aspect but it's like with western action blockbuster comic book movies and he kind of combines the two even though he's better when he's just pure horror del toro that is but Ron Perlman's real excited about getting this trilogy completed and getting these movies up and running, this last one. The trilogy's not finished, so he wants this. He's desperate for this to get made, but considering that these movies don't really make that much money, it's gonna be unlikely, especially the epic scale that this one sounds like it has. How are they gonna get this made? How are they gonna get the funds together to do it? I don't know, but maybe one day we'll see it. Maybe as an animated feature, would you guys be willing to see Hellboy 3? completed as an animated feature instead of a live action one if that was the only option they had maybe maybe they could tell that story in a gaming setting because we know that del toro who was involved in the the now cancelled silent hill movie or silent hill game that was going to be made which was looking amazing up until the point that doosh, they put a kibosh on that shit Maybe, would you be interested to play Hellboy 3 as a game for Xbox One or PS4 or PC or whatever? Would that be satisfying or would you rather just an animated feature you can sit back and watch? You know, if it tells that story and if we can get that story out there, it's better than nothing, you know? Live action movie would be the better one with all those options, but if it ain't, which one would you go for? Let me know. Number eight, Netflix have announced that they're going to be invested. For those of you, especially the UK guys, if you've seen a show which comes on over here called Black Mirror, it's kind of this sporadic show, comes on every few years, but it's great. It's basically Twilight Zone for the modern age. It kind of usually tells a technological twist on these horror stories of, you know, with 
people get corrupted or corrupted by technology or to not, it, it's the multiple stories it's an anthology show we're getting new ones oh we're getting new ones with netflix money behind it it's ooh, so if you haven't seen it yet this is a good time to jump on the black mirror bandwagon everyone loves black mirror you have to but yeah as i say if you don't know anthology series each episode is its own contained story tony kebbell's been in uh being in these uh the chick from Agent Carter who's in the Captain America movie, she's done them. There's a whole bunch of great actors and writers being involved in this, so to know that it's going to continue. I'm not sure where the Netflix ones are going to take place, whether it's going to stay UK based or whether these ones are going to be US based. I'm still guessing it's going to be the same creative team behind it, which is what keeps it strong, which keeps me optimistic that it's going to still continue that great level of quality that they've had so far. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. Black Mirror will continue. We ain't seen it yet. What's that shit? Number seven, UK and France. We're gonna be getting Star Wars: The Force Awakens. It's a little bit early. A little bit early. Literally from France. We're gonna get it on the 16th of December, and the UK are gonna get it on the 17th which may even be slightly early because those are the Friday dates I believe but now generally movies tend to get released sometimes on a Wednesday night or a Thursday it's basically Wednesday night turning to Thursday so it could even end up being 15th and 16th respectively for France and UK before the States it's not long a couple of days but it's not a big thing you know a lot of movies are getting European release dates early mainly because of uh, pirating because movies when they get released in the States before everywhere else they tend to get pirated quicker in the States get thrown on the internet and everyone else in the rest of the world can get up those bootlegs and download all that shit but when it's released in Europe the bootlegs unless it's coming from Russia because they tend to be pretty quick coming out of Russia but usually those ones are in Russian so it takes longer to get those uh, English language versions out there so it tends to get slower bootlegged over there so it actually kind of works out in the studio's favor that's why these movies tend to get released generally the big blockbusters anyway get released a lot quicker in Europe and in Asia Asia, Asia is a whole nother thing China everything is bootlegged like fucking that even before it's in the cinema but beyond that yeah so hmm UK fans we get to see it quick France fans, you get to see it even quicker. Might be worth investing in the Eurostar ticket. Oh, oh, oh. Weekend in France. Not bad, not bad. Number six. Oh, oh, oh. Wrong fingers. Number six. Uh, we have a first look. Our first look at Matt Damon back in born mode. Yes, we have a first look at. Jason Bourne on set of the new Bourne movie. I never thought I'd get to see Matt Damon playing Bourne again. Now there was always talk over the years that maybe he'd come back, maybe he'd be interested if uh, the director comes back, Greengrass, but I don't know, I never thought it would really actually come to fruition, but now it has. Here it is, looking gritty and grammy as ever. Oh, this is gonna be good. I'm not sure if it's gonna blend the last Bourne movie, the she one, the Jeremy Renner one. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't great by Bourne standards. It just wasn't that good. But it had its moments. But I'm not sure if it's gonna blend those two worlds together or if it's just gonna be its own isolated Bourne that's gonna continue on from Matt Damon's other ones. We'll see. We'll see. But it's nice to know that the Bourne, the Jason Bourne, has returned. Oh. Before I wait, and he's still in shape, looking Grammys ever. To be honest, Matt Damon kind of needs this. He hasn't had too many big movies since. Even though I think The Martian's gonna be major for him. But yeah, look forward to this. Boy, is back, baby. Oh, 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 yeah. Number five. Maybe should have been number four, considering. But we have a new look at the Fantastic Four. Concept art for the abandoned, abandoned Herbie, which was their like little helper dread thing. Which, considering that these designs go back to 2013, before BB-8, Star Wars: Force Awakens BB-8, this would have been the original ball sidekick 
thing and it would have been awesome it's a shame that it didn't that they didn't actually keep this and put this out there because it would have been because look at the madness that's going on around bb8 people obsessed with that thing the toys or either just come out or about to come out and everyone's going nuts for them the pre-orders are off the scale it's looking like the bb8 remote control thingy me jigs are going to be the sold out toy for the winner for christmas there's always one this time it's bb8 this could have been up there with it even though the design's a little more ambitious should i say probably wouldn't have been a practical effect but i'm not sure maybe they could have i wouldn't have thought that bb8 before i saw it live action i wouldn't have thought that would have been physically possible to do but they did so maybe this would have been physically possible but yeah herbie that's what this film was called and it would have been pretty cool it's, it's it's a shame to see what this fantastic four movie could have been because even uh there's concept art for the fantastic car check this out various designs for various different cars we've got muscle car versions we've got like a lamborghini or ferrari version there's like a whole bunch of them it looked like it could have been cool but it would have been interesting to see how they would have fit it into the bigger story but damn these fantastic four movies could have been insane man they really fucked that shit up they really fucked that shit up but yeah <laughs> herbie could have been the bb8 but maybe if the film still sucked it wouldn't have worked but if it was end up if it was a better movie the movie that they originally wanted to make and herbie was in it it could have been this year's bb8 before bb8 and could have been this christmas's must have toy guess we'll never know people guess we'll never know number four steven spielberg is the much respect of steven spielberg can't diss the guy I was gonna say he's been chatting shit running his mouth, but you can't be disrespectful to Spielberg. The guy's made too many amazing movies. And even if you don't directly love a Steven Spielberg film, there's a good chance that directors you do look up to and admire have in turn been influenced by Spielberg himself. But he has been chatting shit, for lack of a better word, on superhero movies saying that end is nigh that they're gonna go the way of westerns I totally don't agree with that you know it they may not at, be at the peak that they're at now or I think 2016 will be the superhero peak but to say that they're just gonna die out the way westerns did no westerns or westerns even if one's a more action-based western and one's a more thriller or drama based aesthetically just visually a westerns a western the landscape the clothing there's no getting away from it whereas superhero movies they can be so many different genres so many different styles they can be comic they can be comedic like a uh, ant-man they can be dark and gritty like the dark knight you can't even comprehend you can't even put ant-man and dark knight together even though they're both costume heroes it's okay let's not even put those two together let's put history of violence that's a comic book movie a lot of people don't realize that it was a comic book but it was amazing movie and put that with uh the avengers you know you, just, you can't comprehend that shit or even sin c it's like they're completely different the, the comic book movies can be any genre any niche or film so to say that the whole thing's just gonna be psh, even just superheroes just to say it's superheroes are gonna be gone the people are gonna get sick of it kids would always love superhero movies more than anything I can't see them ever going away I can't see it I can't see it they may like I said they may not be the movie of the year but to say that there still won't be one or two superhero superhero movies made every year uh, Spielberg respect to you you're the man but I think you're wrong on this one I have to say I think you are well, you guys let me know if you're wrong you think he's right you think the top the clock's ticking on this do you think they could go the way of the western which is real extreme because westerns did completely die out for a long time for decades but let me know comments down below number three apple i've been thinking this is apple the company i've been thinking that they may be contemplating going into original television content the same way as uh, HBO and Netflix and Showtime this could be interesting because this is a company with a 
bottomless pit of finances. So to think that these people could be getting in the movie making game or the TV making game more specifically is that the thing oh, on the surface you think it's Apple, what do they know? Fucking Apple man. They know everything and they can do anything. So, you know, there are still talks and then maybe coming up with their own streaming service we've heard that over the last couple of years that they've been trying to get that together they have their plans for it for an apple tv not the device but an actual service apple tv but the only thing that's been holding it up so far is negotiations with studios and uh, cable internet providers and all of that shit so it's a technical mishmash but if they ever do which it's looking like they are kind of figuring it out slowly and it's all coming together i think that once they do have that they want to start putting their own original content together and putting it out there oh i wouldn't be surprised if behind the scenes they've been having uh, meetings with well i don't want to keep on to superhero hype but considering what's the big shows right now it wouldn't surprise me if they've had meetings with maybe marvel or maybe even dc because marvel seem to have their thing with netflix right now but it would be the smart thing to do considering or maybe they just want to go complete original and just start with their own dramas, thrillers, fantasy shows, but if Apple get into the move into the I keep saying say movie business, but if they get into the original TV content business, Lord have mercy. I guess it's only best for us. Cause there's more shit to watch. Like there ain't already enough millions upon millions of fucking TV shows to watch. Now we could have Apple original content to deal with. <laughs> it's exciting baby. It's exciting. Ooh. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that prospect. Number two, things have been changing at Marvel. Kevin Feige is now no longer answering to uh, what was the guy's name? He had the crazy name, the evil boss, Ike Perlmutter. He was the CEO of Marvel. He was the guy who ran the whole thing he saved the company back in the 90s when it was gonna go bankrupt a lot of people don't know that at one point at one point I believe it was in the 90s could have been the 80s but I believe the 90s at one point DC almost bought Marvel Marvel was in that bad of trouble bankrupt completely almost bankrupt but this guy came in Ike Poma saved the company brought it back from the brink set up Marvel Studios brought in uh, Kevin Feige this guy never wanted to be photographed, he always stayed away, never did interviews, always stayed in the shadows. A lot of people don't like him in the business, a lot of people don't like him. But he did save the company, but well, he's the one to blame as to why Marvel have this uh, penny pinching philosophy where they don't like to pay actors that much, they don't like to spend that much in their movies. He's the main reason for that. He's the businessman, the financial guy who not only brought that company back but seems to be the one who's hindering its growth in terms of the movies. He seems to be the one behind their not wanting to have female superhero movies. He's the main reason for that. But now he's no longer the one in charge of the movies at least. He's still CEO of Marvel proper and of TV but Kevin Feige no longer has to answer to him and uh, he was looking during the development of Civil War while they were filming that came out that Kevin Feige was actually wanting to quit he actually got to the point where the interference not just for Perlmutter and the other sort of board it was too much and he wanted to get the fuck out of there but apparently that kind of uh, told Disney that kind of showed them that okay we need to restructure this we don't want to lose Kevin he's done too much for us he's been printing money billions of it so they've restructured Marvel and now Kevin Feige answers directly to Disney directly he no longer has to go around to Paul Ma who in turn has to go to Disney this could be a good thing but in that restructuring they also dismantled their brain trust their sort of uh, knights at the round table of guys who kind of come up and shepherd the stories that Marvel has been coming up with for their movies and their bigger you know cinematic cinematic universe that's all being dismantled now. There's a handful of guys still there, but for the most part, that's gone out of the window. That is the part that I'm a little unsure about. 
that is the part. There's been a few stories as to what they were responsible for, this brain trust. What story aspects that they came up with as opposed to the ones that they didn't. I'm not sure whether that's true or not. You know, it was insinuated that a lot of the better Marvel movie ideas and movies came from that brain trust and the ones that they weren't involved with were the ones which didn't do well like you know Iron Man 2 and 3 and you know a few others but we don't know that's the part that worries me Kevin Feige let loose able to spread his wings that excites me but the fact that there's a different team now coming up with this roadmap for these movies I don't know man I guess time will tell but let's but they've still got their slate already planned out it may change slightly but I can't imagine anything will be removed from that slate so that's not going to change I guess it's more the story elements of each film that could be affected for the ones that as yet haven't been completely written or finalised so that could affect Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Inhumans maybe the next four I don't think that script's been finalised yet even though there is a script I guess time will tell people. Ooh, but Kevin Feige now is the boss of all bosses. Except for the Disney bosses, but you know. You know. Who else is? Uh, uh, uh. Number one, Luna Brothers have rumored to want more Batman in the Batman v Superman. The movie's still being edited, it's all been shot, effects have been done, it's pretty much been finalised now. But in the cut of the movie which exists, that the executives have seen at Warner Brothers, they love Ben Affleck so much that they want to expand his role and his scenes in the movie and minimise Superman so it becomes more of a Batman movie than a Superman movie. Apparently it's supposed to be pretty balanced right now. From what we're hearing, it's supposed to be pretty well balanced. But these are Zex, knowing that how big Batman is, and how even though Superman Man still wasn't a flop at all, at all, just because of how big Batman is as a character and culturally, they just want to up his involvement, more scenes, more action. They even started shooting more action again in the reshoots for the Suicide Squad, so we're going to see more Batman in that now than we originally were. Even though it's a, a reshoot of the Joker Batman chase scene, but they're expanding it, making it a bigger action sequence in Suicide Squad. So now that they want to do this with Batman v Superman, I don't know if it could tip the scales that a balanced movie may be what we need. You know, you reduce two and a half hour movie, come on, you have all these other characters, you have the Wonder Woman, you have introduction of Aquaman, Flash is supposed to still be in this, Cyborg's supposed to be still be in this in some tiny tiny way so then to minimize Superman even more and to up Batman you could really fuck up the it's like putting too much salt in a, a stew that you're making or too much of one ingredient over another and you, you just kind of unbalance it and just turn it into this this bitter tasteless mess I hope this isn't interfering I hope that it's a genuine attempt to make this a better movie not just to cash in on Batman's popularity even though I am a Batman guy over Superman, I still want this to be a balanced story between the two of them. It's both of them versus each other. You have to root for each side equally. If if there's too much of one, it could damage Superman. And I don't want that. Even though I'm not a Superman fan, I like Henry Cavill's depiction of Man still. And I want it to continue to succeed and go forward into other films. So it's not good. This is coming off of the news from last week that they're contemplating putting back the, the Man of Steel 2 on permanent hold. And this is coming off the news from last week that they're putting Man of Steel 2 on the back burner and they have no plans on really hurrying up and making that one. Which is a shame. Like, what the hell? Are they suddenly just getting rid of Superman? No, no, we're not going to do that because he's obviously going to be in Justice League. But they just don't seem to care about building this character up to where he deserves to be this is coming from someone who ain't even a superman fan but let me know what you think would you prefer to see more superman or more batman or both equally
Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. But that has been my second take of the week of the 9th of September. Yeah, September shit. This year is fucking burning, burning quick. Oh my god, it's going too fast, people. Summer's officially over. Oh my lord. Oh damn. Yeah, it's 9th of September 2015. This has been my second take and I've been able to reach your host. Talk to me guys, let me know down below if you like the video. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, like, share, all that shit. Tweet me, I'm on Instagram, I'm all over the place man. Keep hollering. And uh, some news down the road, I'm looking to uh, do a, a podcast at some point. So I'll keep you guys informed. It's still an ongoing, an ongoing thing, but it'd be interesting. Maybe even start getting you guys as guests. That could be interesting too. But I'll, I'll inform you guys later. But yeah. There guys, it's been my second take of the week.